World War I officially started on July 28, 1914, and ended on November 11, 1918. The number of casualties differs depending on what source you read, and finding exact numbers is of course impossible. It's generally thought this devastating war involving multiple nations ended with about 20 million deaths and 21 million wounded. 10 million of those deaths were civilian deaths, and 9.7 million of them were military personnel. It said the Entente powers, also called the Allies, lost around 5.7 million soldiers, and the Central powers lost somewhere in the region of 4 million. As the Robert Schumann Center tells us, many of the overall deaths were not related to actual fighting, but to famine, disease, and genocide. Welcome to this episode of the Infographic Show, 50 Shocking Facts About World War I. Number 50, the Allies. Before we talk about details many of our viewers might not know, we have to spend a bit of time on the basics. Who was involved, for instance? Well, it started with Austria-Hungary and Serbia declaring war on each other. Soon after, other countries got involved. As we already said, there were the Allies and the Central Powers. The main Allies were the French Republic, the British Empire, and the Russian Empire. Italy changed sides and joined the Allies. The USA declared war on Germany on April 6, 1917. These were the main players on the Allied side, but backing them up were the countries of Belgium, Brazil, Greece, Montenegro, Romania, Japan, and Serbia. Please note that we have stated empires, which consisted of various other nations. If you go to the Cook Islands, you'll find a memorial with a list of its soldiers that fell in the war. Or you can look at a similar list of people who came from India and died in the war, and it's a very long one. For instance, 1.4 million Indians served, while 629,000 Canadians did. The empire where the sun never set was vast. Number 49. The Central Powers The Central Powers' main players were Germany, Austria-Hungary, the Ottoman Empire, and Bulgaria. Then there were what were called co-belligerents and German client states. The main co-belligerents were the Dervish State, a Somali Muslim Kingdom, the South African Republic, and the Sultanate of Darfur. Number 48. Who Died? It's said that Germany mobilized 13,250,000 soldiers. 66% of them ended up as casualties, and 1.8 million of them ended up injured or in the ground. Over 20 million Russians served, and around 11.8 million, or 56% of them, died or got injured. These numbers are highly disputed. 6.2 million Brits went to war, and 886,000 of them didn't come back. 41% of those Brits died or were hurt in the war. The French sent 8.4 million people to war, and 1.4 million soldiers died. 67% of French soldiers were injured or died. The USA sent 4.3 million soldiers to war, and 53,000 of them didn't come back. 5.9% of American soldiers were hurt or died. 74,000 Indians from almost 1.5 million soldiers died in the war, 650,000 Italians from over 5.6 million soldiers died, 62,000 Australian soldiers died, and 65,000 Canadians died. Romania was also badly hit, with 250,000 of its soldiers not coming back from the war. It was almost the same situation for Serbia, which lost 275,000 soldiers. We can't go through every country, unfortunately, as it would just take too long, but these countries suffered the worst in terms of military losses. The USA also suffered in an entirely original way, but we are keeping that fact for the number one spot. Number 47, a chain reaction. Okay, now that we have some of those basic facts over with, let's talk about more obscure things. Some people say one man was the catalyst for the beginning of the war. His name was Gavrilo Princip, the Bosnian Serb who assassinated Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria and his wife. He said after he was arrested, I am a Yugoslav nationalist aiming for the unification of all Yugoslavs and I do not care what form of state, but it must be freed from Austria. He obviously had no idea this would start a war, and then a world war. Number 46. Always read the use-by date. After the assassination, Mr. Princip didn't fancy a life in jail, so he swallowed a cyanide pill. However, this only made him feel sick because it said the pill was out of date. The 19-year-old also tried to shoot himself, but his gun was taken from him. Talk about an ill-starred life. He was then sent to prison, where conditions were so awful, he got very sick, lost a limb, and died looking not much different from a skeleton. Number 45. Trenches. So you probably know this already, but much of the war was fought in trenches. On the Western Front, you had many of these things, and millions of soldiers lived in them. Sometimes the opposing armies were not even that far apart, with the space between them being called No Man's Land. Of that space, one historian writes, On the Western Front, it was typically between 100 and 300 yards, though only 30 yards on Vimy Ridge. 
Number 44, Trench Feet. Standing inside dirty, muddy, often rain-soaked trenches was hard on the feet, or you could say soft on the feet. Many soldiers developed what became known as trench foot. You could also call it zombie foot, as that is what it might look like. Sometimes it would become gangrenous, and the foot would have to be amputated. Number 43, dogs. The British loved their dogs, and during the war, some people in the UK donated their canines to the war effort. Dogs could run around the battlefield and carry messages, and they were hard to shoot. Smaller dogs were also great at catching rats in the trenches. Believe it or not, there were what was called casualty dogs. These dogs would run around the battlefield with medical supplies tied to them so injured soldiers could be helped. They were like little four-legged ambulances. Number 42, Jackie. South African soldiers took a baboon to France to help out. Its name was Jackie and it had a uniform. Number 41, dead fish. Goldfish were also employed, or we should say sacrificed. They were used to test the water that had been used to wash gas masks. If the fish died, those masks needed a better washing. Number 40, a stairway to hell. The Brits used to hate German Zeppelins, which are kind of rigid airships that would fly over Britain. They killed about 500 people in the UK, and the British public certainly didn't like the sight of them. The first ever Zeppelin attack by Germany on Britain happened at Great Yarmouth and King's Lynn in January 1915. By the end of the war, the Brits had become pretty good at shooting them down, destroying 77 of the 115 airships of the German Zeppelin fleet. Number 39, British men. When the war began, there were just 350,000 soldiers in the British army. That number became millions when conscription was introduced in 1916. That meant that if you were a bloke aged 18 to 41 and in decent health, off to war you went. Number 38, I'm not going. Some people just refused to fight. Many of those people may have had an inkling of the utter carnage that was taking place on the front lines while higher ups were busy moving plastic figures over a map. Others were pacifists because of their religious beliefs. Those that refused to go were called conscientious objectors, and it's believed there were 16,000 of them in the UK. One man writes, I looked him straight in the eye and told him, I said, I respectfully refuse to obey your orders. And he went barmy. Absolutely barmy. Barmy means crazy, if you didn't know already. Not many Brits use this word nowadays. Number 37, Dear Bertrand. British philosopher Bertrand Russell was a conscientious objector. I never believed so frightful a thing could happen. It is utter madness for us to join this war, said Russell. This very intelligent man was well aware of what scheming is often behind wars and the propaganda countries use to send their men to die. Russell said the public needed to think harder about war, stating, The force that in the long run makes for peace and all other things is reason, the power of thinking against instinct. He wasn't keen on American war policies either later in his life. He died at the ripe old age of 97. Number 36. It was the Germans who first used the flamethrower in the war, and their scary machines could fire flames 130 feet. Historians wrote that the Flammenwerfer terrified British soldiers. Number 35. Tank sex. The British had male and female tanks in the war. Male tanks had two six-pounder guns and three 303 Hotchkiss machine guns, while female tanks had one Hotchkiss and four Vickers machine guns. Number 34, Mexico Go. The Brits intercepted a German telegraph in 1917. It was a message from German Foreign Secretary Arthur Zimmerman to Germany's minister in Mexico. It said, Please invade the USA. The Brits didn't tell the USA about the message at first. They waited for a better time instead. The Brits thought if America was going to get involved, there had to be a perfect moment to show the country that it was almost invaded. Number 33, PTSD. Imagine what it would be like seeing half your friends being killed. This kind of warfare is unimaginable to people today. Many soldiers returned home and became what people have called a quiet man. In the army, there wasn't much sympathy, and if men suffered psychologically, they were often called weak. Number 32, how do you really feel? We found this excerpt from a book written after the war about the mental state of some men that came back. It says that some of those men suffered loss of memory, insomnia, terrifying dreams, pains, emotional instability, diminution of self-confidence and self-control, attacks of unconsciousness or of changed consciousness, sometimes accompanied by convulsive movements resembling those characteristic of epileptic fits, incapacity to understand any but the simplest matters, obsessive thoughts, usually of the gloomiest and most painful kind, even, in some cases, hallucinations and incipient delusions. It also states that these symptoms make life for some of their victims a veritable hell. 
Number 31, no shocks please. Sigmund Freud didn't like the fact that many of these suffering men were given electric shock therapy, which basically meant destroying their brains. Freud wrote that war neuroses were best treated with psychoanalysis, not shocks. Number 30, military men don't get neuroses. The military fought back against all these intellectuals, saying war could ruin a man physically and psychologically. One military man wrote, War neuroses, which persists, is not a credible disease to have, as it indicates in practically every case a lack of the soldierly qualities which have distinguished the Allied armies. No one should be permitted to glorify himself as a case of shell shock. Shell shock was exactly what it sounds like, a kind of PTSD before the expression was created. Number 29, sixth place. It's generally thought that the First World War was the sixth deadliest of modern wars. Number 28, Chinese warriors. Maybe the deadliest war of all time was the Three Kingdoms War in China that lasted 60 years from 220 to 280. It's thought as many as 40 million people died. The Mongol invasions killed almost that number. Number 27, letters to the front. 12 million letters were delivered to the Western Front every week. It took them two days to get there from the UK. Number 26, plastic faces. It was this war that more or less started the work of plastic surgeons, as so many people lost bits of their faces and other body parts. One soldier described what happened to his face in the war. I could feel something lying loosely in my left cheek, as though I had a chicken bone in my mouth. It was, in reality, half my jaw, which had been broken off, teeth and all, and was floating about in my mouth. Number 25, banks of blood. The first ever blood bank was set up in 1917 on the Western Front. Number 24, the mess of Gallipoli. 58,000 soldiers died at the bloody Battle of Gallipoli, a move thought up by Winston Churchill to bring down Germany's ally, Ottoman Turkey. Australia's ex-Prime Minister once said this battle left horrific scars and was, in a critical sense, our nation's baptism of fire, and 8,000 Australians didn't come back. 87,000 Ottoman Turkish troops also died. Number 23, Old Siam. It said one of the countries hardly anyone knew joined the war was Thailand. 19 Thai soldiers died of accident and disease, although in those days they were called Siamese as the country was called Siam. The soldiers fought on the side of the Allies. Number 22, poetry, not pain relief. People wear poppies to commemorate war because of a poem written about World War I. That poem is called In Flanders Fields. This is one stanza. We are the dead, short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Number 21, no food. The British had such a big food shortage that the government banned feeding pigeons and people throwing rice at weddings. Number 20, fake Paris. During the war, the French built a fake Paris to fool German bombers. The Telegraph writes, a second Paris, complete with a Champs-Élysées and Gare du Nord, was built towards the end of the First World War to fool German bombers. The fake city was very much a secret and it was never fully finished or tested. Number 19, we speak no English here, dude. Did you know that before World War I, German was the second most widely spoken language in the USA but was forcibly suppressed because of the war? Number 18, Germans were treated badly in America. During the war, all Germans in America were forced to carry registration cards at all times after they had registered at the post office. NPR writes that the US wanted to get rid of all things German, saying, during World War I, US government propaganda erased German culture. The Huffington Post also states that 2,048 Germans living in America were arrested and forced to live in internment camps. Number 17, ban on sausages. During the war, Germany put a ban on eating sausages. 250,000 cow intestines were used to make just one zeppelin, so intestines were in demand. Number 16, fake news. The British wanted America to get involved in the war, so it decided one way to do that was to write some fake news to get Americans emotional and harbor some anti-German sentiments. They had journalist John R. Ratham write reports that were later said to be fraudulent. According to Time Magazine, his motto was raise hell and sell papers. Other media reports that his false reports stirred up anger against many innocent Germans living in the US. Number 15, Native Americans. It's said about 13,000 Native Americans fought in the war. Number 14, the native tongue. 
Germans were always breaking codes, and it was hard to come up with something to beat that. After hearing two native Choctaw soldiers talking, one American officer realized that the Germans would never understand this strange language. The BBC writes, The Choctaw Telephone Squad was born. It said this band of men were instrumental in winning many battles. Number 13. Clever Birds It's thought that about 500,000 pigeons carried messages during the war. Some of them were sent to the front line by parachute. One such message we found read, On water, attacked by three Huns. Huns were Germans. Don't ever call pigeons pests again. Number 12. The Return of the Hawks The Germans didn't much like how the British used those clever birds, so the German army trained hawks to kill the pigeons. Number 11. The Sari Sam the worst battle in British history was at the Battle of the Somme. Some 60,000 British men died in just one day. It's said more than 1 million British, French, and German troops were killed or injured. 465,000 to 600,000 were German, 350,000 were British, and 204,000 were French. Soldiers from Australia, New Zealand, New Finland, South Africa, and Canada also died. One German officer once wrote, Somme, the whole history of the world cannot contain a ghastlier word. Number 10. Genocide It's said that during the war, the Turks slaughtered around 1.5 million Armenians. Robbery and rape were also common. This is known as the Armenian Holocaust. Number 9. Silent Night Time magazine writes, On a crisp, clear morning 100 years ago, thousands of British, Belgian, and French soldiers put down their rifles, stepped out of their trenches, and spent Christmas mingling with their German enemies along the Western Front. Stories differ, but it's generally thought about 100,000 soldiers had a truce on Christmas Day, singing hymns, and even playing football in no man's land. One British soldier wrote, First the Germans would sing one of their carols, and then we would sing one of ours. Number 8. New Nations After the war, independent nations emerged. They were Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Poland. Number 7. Big Guns In 1917, the Germans pulled out what was at the time the biggest gun in the world. It looked more like a house than a gun, and it could fire shells up to 31 miles. Its name was Lang Max, which meant Long Max. Number 6. Rape of Belgium The Germans marched into Belgium, and all hell broke loose. They killed and plundered, but it wasn't as bad as how the British media portrayed the invasion. The Brits compared German soldiers to serial killer Jack the Ripper. Nonetheless, things were pretty bad. 18,296 children became war orphans. So yes, it was bad, but not as bad as the Brits made it out. Fake news isn't new by any means. Number 5. Mud Bath Some sources say that the mud, at times, was so thick that some soldiers disappeared in it. By the way, trenches were given names such as Death Valley. In all, 25,000 miles of trenches were dug. Number 4. Famous Soldiers Who fought in the war? The Lord of the Rings author J.R.R. Tolkien was one famous person. Harry S. Truman was also there, and so was Mr. Adolf Hitler. Walt Disney tried to sign up, but was rejected because of his young age. He did, however, end up driving ambulances in France. Number 3. Lots of love, your dearest son. War was horrible, and letters home to families can be harrowing to read. One man wrote, Just a line to let you know that I got the fags, or cigarettes, on Tuesday. I thank you very much for sending them. They have stopped the weekend passes as there are a lot of absences, but I shall ask the captain for permission to come on a pass. We are going to the front on the 19th of November. Dear mother, do not worry about me, for by God's help I shall come home well. He died soon after he wrote that letter, according to the telegraph. Here's another letter. This is what they call the sum. Up to the neck in mud and water. Shells flying everywhere. That was from a Brit called Grimshaw. We are not sure what happened to him. Number 2. British seamen write the best letters Because of the Freedom of Information Act, we know that a man called Mansfield Smith Cumming did something original when he served in the Secret Service during the war. Apparently, he discovered that semen, or sperm, made great invisible ink, and like other invisible inks, it was impossible to find with chemicals. Mr. Cumming wrote, Now every man has his own stylo. Okay, we know this sounds a bit like fake news, but Britain's Telegraph backs the story up, stating, British intelligence services experimented with using semen as an invisible ink to write top secret letters. Now you know how to send secret letters to your lover. Use your man juice. Number 1. No condoms for Americans It seems the USA was the only country not to give its soldiers condoms for their time served during the war. It's also said that thousands of American soldiers returned home with STDs. The Huffington Post writes, An estimated 400,000 military men were infected with syphilis or gonorrhea. 
Those Yank soldiers were very popular in those days with European girls. Apparently, the British also didn't give condoms to its forces at the start, but changed that policy quite quickly. Perhaps with all that terrible destruction going on, one solace to soldiers was wanting to create a new life. We could have said so much more, so feel free to add to this list in the comments. We finished on perhaps some amusing points, but we don't want to undermine the devastation and loss of life in this terrible, some say avoidable, war. We just wanted to lighten things up at the end. Be sure to check out our other video, 50 Shocking Facts About World War II. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time!